in a chair today that wants to be inside. Amen. We do have an overflow space in the back, and you can watch what we're doing on the monitors, and I'm sure you can hear through the doors. Amen. Because it's about to be a loud one today. Amen. Again, if, if there's an empty seat, just scoot on in towards the middle. Scoot on in towards the middle, and uh, folks can get squared away. Amen. If you are glad to be alive, somebody give God a great big hand praise if you're glad to be alive today. We are so honored to have you in worship with us today. And if this is your first time in worship, we want to thank God for you being here. So let's thank God for all of our first time special guests, loved ones, family members, and friends. We believe that the power of God is greater than the power of any enemy, and uh, it is that power that we are here to just seek and, and, and receive, and, and you being here today has already underscored the power of God in our lives, and so we pray that you feel welcomed. Uh, there are connection cards that we hand out, and uh, if you don't mind, we'd love to know that you were here, and you can fill out your name and put that in the offering. And uh, we'll get a chance to follow up with you. Just send you a nice letter of, of, of thank you for being here. And we're not a stalker church, so we won't show up at your house asking for a cup of sugar in the middle of the night. Amen. Uh, but we will uh, hopefully add you to our email list if you so desire. If you need us to be a blessing to you in any kind of way, we certainly want to do that in the name of the Lord. But more than anything, we just want to say thank you for being here this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to have a good time rejoicing and being glad in it. And uh, so we're so blessed you're here. I want to uh, turn your attention to the screen, and we're going to see what's happening at the way this week. And then we'll come back with uh, a few special guests and just talk a little bit about what's happening today. We're going to do a little bit of singing today and a, a lot of bit, a, a lot of, bit of, 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 of chanting and, and just getting ourselves filled with the power of God's spirit to resist the evil that is at work among us. Amen. So turn your attention to the screen and let's see what's happening out the way this week. Good morning. Here are your announcements. Walk with Christ and be baptized. Sign up on a connection card or at thewayberkeley.com slash connect. Be prepared to attend the baptism class, which happens on the day you're baptized. We commit to helping you grow as a Christian. Sign up for the available live groups at thewayberkeley.com slash grow. Get a free session with a licensed clinician by signing up at thewayberkeley.com. Join your friends who have expanded their service to our community. You can serve for a term on one of our ministry teams. Sign up at thewayberkeley.com slash grow in order to serve. Our charged up youth ministry that serves junior high and high school students is looking for adult volunteers. You can join the ministry as a greeter, DJ, social media guru, or assist with games and activities. If that sounds like you, come for orientation on this Thursday at 6 p.m. Take the journey with Brittany Richardson as she tells the story of a woman who suffers childhood sexual abuse, finds healing and community through the arts, and moves to Africa to use the arts to bring healing to other exploited young girls. Art and Abolition is on Thursday, August 31st at 8 p.m. You can access these updates and more at thewayberkeley.com. Enjoy your week. All right, let's thank God for all those announcements again. Good morning. Here are your announcements. Is that a replay? Oh, okay. I was about to say, that's a remix. Praise God. All right. Um, so uh, there are a couple other things that are happening this week that are worthy of our mention. Uh, on this Wednesday, uh, we are launching our second a series of tech and resistance uh, campaigns and trainings for young people. And that's happening this Wednesday at 6.30 here at The Way. Uh, Sister Edeline Bobay, many of us know uh, her, of course, one of our, our super strong revolutionary members that does all kind of tech activism all across the world, literally, is uh, helping us to get our second round of tech work happening. And uh, no other, none other than the great Elaine Brown of the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense is going to be here on Wednesday to help us get it kicked off. So it's going to be a great forum. Everybody is more than welcome to come. And we're going to have a good time talking about what does it mean to resist using technology? How do we teach our young people to use technology as an agent of good in the world and not as something that tears humanity apart? And so we're inviting you to bring your children, young people, t uh, teenagers in particular. Uh, we think it's going to be a great opportunity to have a great conversation 
with uh, Chairwoman Elaine Brown and Edeline and a number of us will be here as well. And then I want to re-emphasize on Thursday, uh, our dear sister's coming all the way back from Kenya to share with us her, one, her single person stage uh, play about her life and experience. And uh, we really want folks to come. This is an opportunity for us to raise some money for her and her ministry and her work there. And uh, a number of uh, young women that she's working with there. We want to be a blessing on Thursday. It's free, but we will take a goodwill offering to be able to bless her and send her back with some resources. And uh, our church has already adopted, I think, one of the girls in her collective. And so we want to send her back with a little bit more support. Is that all right? So these announcements are going to be on the website. And on the Facebook page, and we're going to tweet them out, maybe even Instagram them. Touch your neighbor, all right? And uh, we want everybody to spread the word in the name of the Lord. I'm going to invite uh, my brother, Pastor Ben, to come on up and join me on the stage real quick, real quick. Amen. Because we want to talk a little bit about why we're doing what we're doing today. And, uh, and then uh, we're going to spend a, a little bit of time, amen, just uh, imagining... Uh, what does it mean for us to resist? Part of what I've been saying is that uh, the devil is always around us, amen, and the devil is always busy. How many of you used to hear your big mama say that? Oh, the devil is busy. And how many know we got a little older and so sophisticated that we don't think the devil and evil is real anymore? And then this last election, and maybe even a little bit before, depending on how you're stationed in the world, you have a seemingly very clear consciousness of the devil and evil manifested through systems and how people are easily seduced by these forces. And so today we are here to bear witness that one of our great responsibilities as followers of the ways of Jesus is to cast the devil out. And uh, the devil can always be cast out if the people of God are willing to cast the devil out. Now, if the people of God are willing to accommodate the devil, then the devil going to come and set up shop right in your house and right in your mind and right in your neighborhood. But how many know that we have been given some power and authority? Uh, go ahead, Ben. Talk a little bit about what do you think this means for us today? First, somebody scream, I, I, I believe, I believe, I believe. For those of y'all that don't know, this is a crazy church for, for those of y'all that haven't been here. Go ahead and take your seats really quick. How many of you feel? Some of y'all feel energized right now. The reason I think it was important for us to start that way is we got to start the way that we want to finish. 
The truth of the matter is, we are not trying to win. We have already won. I want you to take about five to 10 seconds and just look around the room. Look at the diversity, the generations, the different ideologies, the different things that call us together. That in moments of crisis and in moments of contention, our solidarity with one another is the tangibility of our victory. Now there's work that we have to do in order to live into the future that already belongs to us. We are here because other people were faithful in their moment. We're not here in a vacuum absent of history. But four and 500 years ago in this country, some people believed that they would win. 300 years later, people kept believing while in the middle of chattel slavery, somebody, I believe, somewhere back behind the plantation was in the shed saying, I believe that we will win. I believe that we will win. 200 years later, certain people coming over to the country, other people still trying to survive, and yet whether it was some of our API folks that were trapped on Angel Island or other folks forced onto the railroads, those people were saying, I believe that we will win. Whether it was our Latino sisters and brothers being pushed out of their places and still traveling across deserts, facing wild animals to pursue opportunity to a land that belonged to their people. I got to imagine somebody was walking through that desert saying, I believe that we will win. And still here where we are in our moment today, we've got to keep holding that with people of color, with religious minorities, with our queer sisters, brothers, and relatives. We all are still saying in this moment, we believe that we will win. So I'm gonna just give this little bit of frame really quick for us to think about what we must do. In the Gospel of Mark, for those that, that aren't familiar with Christian scriptures, there is this story where Jesus crosses over a stormy river and he comes to a graveyard. And in this graveyard, there is a man who is possessed by demons. Y'all can keep playing. I was feeling medicational. That's not a word, I know, but it's a little inside joke we got. That was helping me. Well, once you stopped, I was like, oh man, I'm gonna lose my, my rhythm, you know? But Jesus comes across and he meets this man who is demon possessed in the graveyard. And when, when, when Jesus arrives, now it's important for us to keep framing for folks, because I know sometimes some of us hear the name of Jesus, depending on where we're coming from. You know, some of us feel good, some of us break out in a rash. Well, I want to keep framing for us, right, that, that we rock with the Palestinian Jew that lives on the underside of the Roman Empire that was killed by the police. Somebody say, Black Jesus. Uh, I wish I had a neighbor. So Black Jesus gets over here to the graveyard in his Tims and his, no, I'm just kidding, but <laughs> he comes walking up to the graveyard and this man comes out to him who is possessed by many demons and devils. And the man runs up to him and says, why are you here messing with me? Why are you here to torment me before my time? Now, Jesus asks the man, what is his name? What's the name of what's possessed you? And the man says, Legion, for we are many. It's important in this story to recognize that that word Legion was representative of a battalion of a thousand Roman soldiers. The, the powerful demonstration of empire. In this story, you got this man from the hood who shows up to confront something that is possessed. And what the man is possessed with is empire. And what empire had been doing to this man is causing him to be in the, unable to be restrained. 
are constrained. The story says that the man was bashing his head against the stones and bashing his head in the graveyard and had everyone else in the town terrorized and afraid. But black Jesus showed up on the shore from the hood of Nazareth. He had been trained to not be afraid of empire, but rather to recognize that somewhere in his struggle, a power had filled him that was greater than anything empire could ever create. And in this story, Jesus cast the demon out of the man and he cast it over into the pigs. There was a herd of pigs in the area. And not only did he free the man, but he filled the pigs with this evil spirit and the pigs ran off the cliff and drowned themselves in the ocean. Now I'm not gonna get in trouble and talk about who the pigs are. Cause we on Facebook Live. But what I will say is that the power that was in Jesus confronted the power that was in the man. And in our story here in America, we like to say that this country has been possessed by the demon of white supremacy since its inception. It was possessed when it committed genocide against the Native Americans. It was possessed when it produced the mid-Atlantic slave trade. It was possessed all throughout all of these generations over and over. It was possessed when it was lynching folks across this country. It was possessed when it instituted Jim Crow. It was possessed when it instituted segregation. It was possessed when it instituted mass incarceration. It was possessed when it instituted the drug war. It was possessed when it killed Michael Brown. It was possessed when it killed Kimberly King. It was possessed when it killed are y'all with me? Jordan Davis, it was possessed when it killed Trayvon, and it was possessed when it killed Tamir Rice. But here's what we're here to say, that now even in the middle of its possession, it has decided that it's gonna unleash these demons and these devils onto our community. We're here today at the way in Berkeley as some people from the hood and around the way to say it's time for us to cross some stormy rivers, to recognize there's a power inside of us. It's not inside of me. It's not inside of him, but it's inside of us. And we are going to bring that power to cast the demon of white supremacy out of this city, out of this country. No Nazis, no KKK, no fascists. USA! We will win! 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 Yeah, 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 yeah! That's the song that says, We believe in the power! Y'all know that? We believe in the power. We believe in the power. We believe in the power. The power of God. The power of God. Oh, 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 oh. clap your hands. Say, we believe in the power. Come on, clap your hands and say, we believe in the power. We believe in the power. We believe. of the person next to you real quick, real quick, real quick. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless the name of God. God, I pray that you'll bless my loved one who I'm touching right now. I pray that no situation that they are experiencing in this moment 
will become larger than the truth and the consciousness of who you are. You are the God of all creation. The earth is yours and everything that lives inside of it. And there is no weapon that the enemy can bring against us that can defeat the people of God. And so God, as I'm touching my loved one right now, as I'm touching my sister, my brother, as I'm touching my friend, or even this is the first time I've met them, I pray God that you will give them what they need at this moment. Just gently squeeze their hand. I squeeze into their hand peace and power. I squeeze into their hand strength and courage. I squeeze into their hand victory and anointing. We give God you the space to move in our circumstance and in our situation. And God, before we cast the devil out of this city, God, we want to cast the devil out of us. So if there's anything inside of us that should not be there, hatred for our loved one, hatred for another person, dominion and violence and, 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 and fear, we cast that out of us. Somebody say, come out. And we want to receive love. We want to receive joy. We want to receive peace that passes all understanding. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus. Now lift those hands right where you're standing. It is me, O oh Lord, and I'm standing in the need of prayer. It is not my mother. It is not my father. It is not my sister. It is not my brother. But it is me, O oh Lord, and I need you, God. I need you to come down and see about me. I need you to come and minister to my heart. So many of us are under all kinds of attack. So we need you, God, to whisper in our ear that everything is going to be all right. We need you to remind us of your promise that when the enemy comes in like a flood, you will lift up a defense against the enemy. Hallelujah! And no enemy will come near us that we are victorious. Thank you, Jesus. We're more than conquerors through him that loved us, through him that called us, through him that died for us. So we lift up our hands to you. And we say, have your way in us, God. Have your way in us today, God. Move by your spirit. And we'll say, yes, Lord. We'll say, yes, Lord. We'll say, yes, Lord. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yes, we'll go. We'll do whatever you say. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, hug the person next to you and just encourage them in the Lord. Encourage them, encourage them, encourage them, encourage them. My hiding place, my safe refuge, my treasure, my treasure, Lord. You are, you are my friend and king, my, my friend, friend and king. anointed one. Anointed Hallelujah. The book of Ephesians chapter number six. Gives us some instructions for all of us who are planning to go out in a few moments. It's so important for you and I to be mindful of what we are doing. 
there are many people that are going to be going out in all other kinds of groups and other kinds of reasons. But the righteous resistance by the people of God is always grounded in the love that Jesus has placed in our hearts. Now, because Jesus has been hijacked and domesticated and used for the purposes of imperialism, most folk wouldn't know Jesus if Jesus sat right next to him in church. You ought to look at your neighbor and just say, is your name Jesus? Amen. I just want to make sure I'm not confused. Praise God. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. But how many of you know that for all of the misuses of Jesus through history by governments, religions, and even people, this same Jesus has become the source of liberation for so many. Which helps me to be reminded that what we are doing, we are becoming the hands and the feet of God in the world. So I don't want you to go out thinking that you're using your own strength and your own power. Because how many know our strength and our power is never enough? I wish I could talk to an honest church in here today. I mean, if we keep it real, how many know your strength and power can't even change you? Lord, have mercy. That's a sermon for another day. Amen. <laughs> but this is what we're doing. We're saying this letter was to a church in Ephesus, first century church, 30, 40, 50 years after Jesus had died. Folks were, you can keep playing too. I like that. Amen. We may got a new vibe here at the way. Touch your neighbor. A church that was trying to figure out how to be faithful in the middle of an empire that had named them enemy number one. And this is what the elders of the church wrote to that church. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Finally is an interesting word because it seems like Maybe folk had been trying some other things and they kind of had to come to the conclusion that when you've tried everything and everything else has failed, maybe you need to finally try the Lord. You ought to give your neighbor a high five and tell him, you're almost close to finally today. You're almost close to finally. Finally, be strong in the Lord. And in the power of God's might. Why? Put on the whole armor of God so you can take your stand against the devil's evil schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, systems, Wickedness in high places. You and I have to have the right analysis while we're going to bear witness that even the Nazis and the white supremacists and the alt-right and these freedom speech folk are nothing but a manifestation of the spirit and the demon of white supremacy. So as much as I want to hate them, and y'all got to know that the preacher wants to hate some folk, amen. And if y'all don't pray for me, I may slide into that trap. But I can't hate somebody who's possessed by a demon. I should feel pity for them. That they are so filled with evil that they've lost control of their own person. So when we go out today, or 
if you stay here, if you go home or wherever you go, and this is on your mind, you must make sure that hatred is not your response to those possessed with demons. How do you do that? Well, put on the full armor of God. Somebody say full armor of God. Say it again, full armor of God. So when the evil day comes, you can stand firm against the evil. What does it mean to stand firm? That means that you're going to stay true to your principles. We've made commitments to resist this evil nonviolently when we go out. If they come up in here, praise God, this is another story. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. But when we go out there, amen, <laughs> we're going we gonna to resist the enemy based off of our principles and values because we know that it is that when we stand on them that forces the enemy to flee. I know some of us who have a sense of history, we, well, Pastor Mike, these white supremacist folk been around a long time. Yes, they have. But I love Pastor Tracy, one of our good friends. She said, this is their last great gasp. And we just experiencing their last great gasp. So we gonna let them gasp. We gonna let them holler and but if you ever met a bully, all a bully really needs to run up into is someone that's bigger, tougher than them. And how many know we follow the king of all kings? So it is that armor you got to put on. Next slide. What does it say? It says that you and I need to put on the whole armor of God. Firm our belt with truth. The breastplate of righteousness. Your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Look at these, these principles that you and I are going to resist the enemy with. Truth. Somebody say truth. Jesus said, if you know the truth, the truth will make you free. And we know that this is the truth, that God created everything and everyone, and there is no one greater than another. The truth is that these folk that are demon-possessed have been seduced by a lie. And so when we go out there together, black, white, red, yellow, polka dot green, Christian, Muslim, Jewish, agnostic, straight, queer, rich, poor, when we out there together, we are proclaiming a truth that will reverse their lie. Somebody say the truth. Righteousness. Somebody say righteousness. Righteousness is not just about your right action. But righteousness, properly translated, also means justice. So we're going out in the name of justice. And justice is always... God's will for peoples, nations, and even this world. So you got to have the righteousness and justice covering 
your heart so your heart does not become more wicked somebody say righteousness somebody say justice your feet have to be prepared with the readiness of the gospel of peace somebody say peace Jesus said this the peace I give you no one can take it away You know when your mind is becoming troubled and overwhelmed, you have forfeited the gospel of peace. So if you need peace today, I want you to lift up your hand and just grab it. Lord, give me peace. Give me peace that my children are going to be all right. Give me peace that my community is going to be all right. Give me peace that my marriage and my relationship is going to work out. Give me peace that my body is going to be healed. Give me peace that the devil is on the run right now. Give me peace that victory is mine. Asha, give me peace, God. God will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind. Stay on. So when we're out there, you got to be able when you start drifting from your peace. What is it that's going to keep your mind stayed? Oh, oh no, Lord. You may have to start singing. You may have to start quoting the scripture. You may have to stand next to someone who believes while you're doubting. And grab their arm and say, help me believe. Help me recover my peace. Whisper the promise of God in my ear. Because what I see with my eyes is taking my peace away. We're not a church, I'm not a pastor that wants to ignore our human weakness. There will be moments where your peace and your joy will waver. But that's why we're together. Because the way God would have it, there is never a time when all of our peace will waver at the same time where all of our joy will be exhausted at the same time, where all of our faith will be shaken at the same time. My faith may be shaken, but then I'm going to need mother to help me get my faith back together. My joy may run out, but then I'm going to need my brother to come on and get right next to me and help me pump my joy back inside of me. Tell the person next to you, I need you, I need you, I need you. Tell them that I need you. I need you, I need you. Take the shield of faith. Somebody say faith. faith. Why? Because the shield of faith can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the devil. When you get out there and the devil is getting on your nerves, put up your shield. Some of you just need to do it right now. Real quick, put up your shield. I didn't tell you to laugh. I just said, put up your shield. <laughs> the shield of faith will block the arrows of the enemy. Hello, somebody. How many can use a little bit more faith today? And it's not just... You know, in the, in the Greek, it's so interesting. There's three words, several words for faith. One is faith in God. One is faith in right principles. And then there is also a faith in each other. I am needing God right now to restore my faith in humanity. Anybody, anybody there right now? This seems like our world is just unraveling right before our eyes. But I believe that there is good. Even in these demon possessed folk out here. I can't see it. I tried. I put them, you know, glasses on. Them, them glasses that look into your soul. Some of y'all wearing them right now. Praise God. But God knows how to remind us that our human dignity it's present in every person, even those who are trying to take yours and mine away. So when they come, put your shield of faith up. 
When they're hating on you, my faith is going to block that arrow. When they're trying to harm you, my faith is going to block that arrow. On your job, on the street corner, wherever you are, put your shield of faith up. Then it says the sword, helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Thy word have I hid in my heart. You're going to need the word of God. Don't tell me, oh, the Bible's too hard to memorize. You know Jay-Z's lyrics pretty good. You got that lemonade all up in your mind. <laughs> you know your stocks, you know, you know, you know the secret code to, to, to your, your lot, your, your, your safe. You know, you can memorize what you think is important. Some of us need to make the word of God important enough to put it in our heart. So I won't sin against God. And then it says, pray in the spirit at all times. Woo! When's the last time you prayed in the spirit? Last time you allowed the Holy Ghost just to speak words that you didn't even know you could talk. Y'all know we, we Pentecostals over here, so we talk them tongues. Sometimes we swing from these chandeliers or roll on the floor. Or we holler and scream. Why? Because we know that there is something about the Holy Ghost. Ooh, when it get a hold to you. But it also gives you a deeper well of compassion. A deeper well of love. There are some mountains that are lower in altitude than some valleys. If you go to the top of Mount Tamapais, is that the, that's the mountain back of us over there? I think that's it. You could be standing on the top of that mountain and at that mountain's highest peak, it is still lower than the valley of Mount Kilimanjaro. When you have access to the Spirit of God, even at your lowest point, you are going to be higher than the highest point of your enemies. Are you following me today? God can put you in a place where even your enemies reaching as high as they can will not be able to touch you even at your lowest point. So pray in the spirit at all times. Pray that the enemy of your soul will never drag you down to their place. But if anything, you ought to be pulling them up. I'm going to pull you out of that hatred. I'm going to pull you out of that evil. I'm going to pull you out of that, 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 that violence and, and, and that, 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 that death. I'm going to pull you out because God has given me through the power of the Spirit the strength to do what others say is impossible. I don't know about y'all, but I feel good in my soul. I feel like we gonna be all right today. <laughs> Loved ones, I want us to know that there are some times and some moments where our act of worship has to move beyond the four walls of our church. And this is one such day. And not all of us are going to be out marching and singing these songs and chanting, we believe we're going to win. Some of us are going to stay behind and Brother Mike Eubanks and some other folks are going to stay behind and 
keep some worship and some atmosphere going so folks can just pray and intercede. If you are one of these prayer warriors, we need you to stay here and pray for a little while. We need you to bear witness in prayer that the evil of this white supremacist element will not only be contained, but it will be defeated here in our city. We need you to pray for us because there is, of course, danger lurking out here. We've already seen that Charlottesville folks are at risk when you go out to confront this evil. And there's some folk who told us we shouldn't go out. We should stay in our homes. Just let them have Martin Luther King Jr. Park. I don't know, I know black folk who fled the South, running away from that evil. And they ended up here in California. Folk fled Alabama and Arkansas, Texas, Mississippi. My own people from North Carolina. Fled that evil 50 years ago. We're not going to allow people to come into our community. March up and down the street terrorizing folk. No, we're not going to do that without us being there. So some of us, we're going to go out there in the power of the Holy Ghost. We're going to look that devil in the face. And I'm going to say, Lucia! Lucia! Tell that devil, you got to get out of my town. You got to get out of our city. And how many of you know, when we done with the Ku Klux Klan and the Nazis, we gonna show up at the city council meeting. And tell the devil to get out of our schools, get out of the police department, get out of the health department. I want the devil out of all this stuff. So, so, some of us, we've been doing this a while, so we ain't afraid, amen. David had a bunch of folk and running around with him, and David, David got so used to killing giants, they called him a giant killer. And he had, he had, was it 30 men? He had a band of 30 folk, and they just was, boy, they was some tough cookies, boy. So whenever a giant came, they weren't all nervous about, oh, what we going to do? Oh, my goodness, here come a giant. No, it's like, well, this last one, <laughs> I, 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 I got a little souvenir. And so guess what? This new one is getting ready to fall at my feet as well. This is the people we have come from. And so you don't have no reason to be afraid. I know you watch these news and everybody like trying to get your heart all. You don't have no reason to be afraid. Don't be afraid. God is with us. Justice is on our side. And though some may have to die, If death is the best thing you got for we who believe in resurrection, that ain't even that big of a deal either. Hello, somebody. So we 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 gonna walk in power, we're gonna walk in victory, we gonna walk in faith and deep love, and we're gonna expect that God's gonna take good care of us, that our witness will bear witness to our children who are in the next room. That if white supremacy try to come back with a force. 50 years from now, they can remember that their parents, their aunties, their uncles came in a church building on a Sunday and walked out with enough power to go face the devil right outside the doors of the church. Hello, somebody. Anybody believe that that's what we are able to do? Let's stand one more time, everybody. Trust and believe God. Lady Daniels, bless us with 
mighty God. Powerful God. Loving God. Merciful God. Victorious God. We have gathered here in your name. Lord God, we come before you as you have prepared your sons and daughters to go out in the name of Jesus, letting this community know that we are not afraid because we know the gospel of Jesus Christ. So in your name, Jesus, we go out today knowing that, yes, Lord, we may have fear, but we are holding on to the sword of your word. You've told us you have not given us a spirit of fear, but power and love and a sound mind in the name of Jesus. Mighty God, hold them, God. Direct them, God. And when the devil would want to have feelings of hatred come up in them, speak peace to their soul, dear God. Let them know that they're going out representing you. So they're going out with love. They're going out with peace. They're going out with nonviolence. Because they know that when they are holding on to your hand, dear God, they are marching and you're going before them, slaying every power of evil, making straight their way that they may go forth in the name of Jesus. Prepare them, dear God. Prepare them from their head to their feet to go and speak the words you would have them speak, to say those things that you would have them say, to face, dear God, what evil they may need to, knowing, dear God, that they are not alone. Prepare them, dear God, as they join that great cloud of witnesses who gone before them who walked in your word and knew how to fight the powers of evil with your Holy Spirit. So now, dear God, we are praying not only for those who are going in the street, but those who will be here praying in the name of Jesus. Put some mighty praying warriors up in here that even before those march, dear God, they have already prayed to you and you have fought the battle. We don't have to wait till it's over. We can shout right now in the name of Jesus. We read the book and we know how the story ends. We are victorious in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your power. Thank you for the gift of Jesus that we, dear God, may fight for justice. You've told us in your word. You look out on your people and you had compassion. Because they were like sheep without a shepherd, dear God. The harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. So we thank you, dear God, for these laborers right here in the way. Who know that we're not only called to come and praise your name inside your house, but to go out into the byways and the highways and let a scared, dying world know that Jesus lives today. And that Jesus is not an empty Jesus but that Jesus is filled with power and might. That Jesus, let us walk without fear. That Jesus fills us with your Holy Spirit. That Jesus, help us to go in the name of justice and righteousness, that it may run down like mighty waters and mighty streams in your name, Jesus. So right now, Lord, cover them, protect them, guide them, lead them, hold them, direct them, Give them your mercy, your graciousness, your peace, your power in the name of Jesus. 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 Somebody here knows Jesus. Say hallelujah. 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 Mighty God. Mighty God. Mighty God. Oh, 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 Jesus, 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 Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. Say Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus. Oh, my God.
Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, we thank you for your presence that is here in the midst of us at this hour. Lord God, as we look unto the hills from which cometh our help, knowing all our help and our strength come from you, Lord God, that made heaven and earth. Lord, we honor your presence this hour. We thank you for the blood that cover hearts and soul. Lord God, we thank you for you is our shepherd. You told us in the word that the Lord is our my shepherd, and I shall not want. Make me to leave, leave in my valleys. We ask us, Lord, to bless us and encourage our hearts and souls this hour as we go out, Lord, in the name of Jesus. For it's not by might nor by power, but it's by your spirit, saith the Lord. We honor your presence this day, Lord, as different ones are about to go out, different ones are about to march. Bless you, Lord God, and let your Holy Spirit be with us. Let us walk in the power and anointing of God. For without God, we can do nothing. We're just like a sheep without a shepherd. We thank you. We praise you right now. Let the Spirit of the Lord be with us, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, God, we walk in your word. Walk in your spirit right now. And we lift you higher, Lord Jesus, so the whole world can see you. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. And you say you will draw me in unto you, Lord God, and we lift you higher. Lord God, be with every soul. Let the peace of God, let the anointing of God be with us. Walk with us in the name of the Lord. Keep us from all harm or danger. The devil is a liar. He's the father of all liars. He's the accuser of the brethren. We thank you, Lord. We bless your name. We give you the highest praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give you the highest praise this day. We walk in your love. We walk in your spirit. In the name of Jesus, we thank and we praise you right now. Everybody say amen. 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 Come on, clap your hands and let's thank the Lord, everybody. Oh, glory to God. All right.